Hey everybody, it's time for my final thoughts on Secret Recipe, but before we get to that, please remember that this was a paid Kickstarter preview. And with that out of the way, here's what I think. Kimberly here, and boy, I'm a sucker for deduction games, and in Secret Recipe, players are trying to deduce all of the ingredients that are out there trying to gain the most points along the way. You don't have to figure it all out, but you do have to time it just right, again, so you can bank on those points. Now, this has a real twist to it, because in most deduction games, you are trying to keep all of your information secret and gain information from other players. But what you actually do on your turn in Secret Recipe is you give fellow players hints or clues that help them narrow down one of your four secret ingredients. And players have a board with a specific order of hidden ingredients that are face down. And there is one of nine that that particular ingredient could be. So when you give a clue, what you're doing is you are taking this marker that identifies the weight of the ingredient that you are essentially giving a clue for, or the type of ingredient. And you simply place this marker into your first slot, your second slot, your third, or your fourth to identify which ingredient you're giving that clue for. So if I put this in the first spot of this board here, and I put it on the ingredient side, I'm saying that that ingredient that you can't see is either represented in the row I put in the pantry, and there is a grid of three by three, so there are nine ingredients in columns and rows. And you put this at the top of a column or to the side of a column and you say, the ingredient that's in my board is in one of these three spaces. It's either an herb, it's either an apple, or it's a bag of flour, for sure. Like, you narrow it down to just three out of the nine. Or you say, it's not one of those which it's not an herb, it's not an apple, it's not a flower. And so you're giving this information away and you kind of want your fellow players to get them. You want, you want your fellow players to guess because when they guess and they get it correct, they do get points. And if more people guess at the same time correctly, the points are kind of watered down. You get two points for a successful guess, but if you're the only one to guess that round, that particular ingredient, and it's correct, you get four. So you want to be the only one to guess that particular one, but you're all getting similar, you're getting the same clue from the player, but you have different information behind your board that you are privy to. Because when you give a clue for a particular row or column, you'll flip over another hidden ingredient. And these are ones that you can just eliminate from your supply. And you flip it over and you're like, oh, there's an apples. It's less likely that that person has an apples in their space because I just found an apples. So you have information, again, that is gonna be coming to you at different points in the game. And it's really cool, I love that system. Now, not only do you have ingredients, you will also have the chance to put it on weight. And there is an entire master list of weights and it goes one, two, three, four, and five. So the light ingredients are things like grapes and herbs and the heavier ingredients are the creams and the flowers. So you say weight wise and you put it down, let's say on a different ingredient, let's put it down on the fourth ingredient. This ingredient is represented here in one of those other ingredients. So there's an ingredient out there that's five weight and you say, yep, it's one, it's five weight or it's four weight or it's not one of those. So it's either a one, two or a three or it's greater than or less than. And you can use the greater than or less than with the weight clue. So there are so many ways you can give clues and it's the pantry items that are helping compare or contrast with one of the four ingredients that you have in your recipe card. And again, you want players to guess those recipe cards. Um, there is more of an advanced play where you kind of play it a little bit close. You, you keep your cards close to your chest and you don't give too many clues too early on and you're forfeiting getting these point tiles, which is what the player gets when their ingredient is guessed. And you are essentially playing the long game 
Um, but I think playing where you're just like giving as much information to your fellow players as you can is great. Because if you can gain the point token and then your fellow players kind of again guess at the same time and they only get the two points each instead of one player getting four, that's really good for you. So there is a lot of really interesting strategy here. And there is a way for you to essentially um, take one of the tiles from the pantry out optionally at the start of your turn and replace it with one from the bag. So if you're really looking for something, you can put it out there. Now, the thing that makes this even more interesting is that when players have their discussion phase after a clue is given, they use their personal player board and they secretly write down a name of someone at the table, not themselves, and then they will either make a think guess, which means I think you have four tokens, by the way, to make those. So you only have four times you can think in the game, but you have a token and you say, I think that your second ingredient is an egg. And then you're essentially making that as a guess and it's not revealed until the ingredient's revealed. And then it's determined were you right or were you wrong later on. And if you're right, one point, if you're wrong, no skin off your nose, no negative points, no nothing. It's low risk, low payout. The high risk, high payout is when you do a no guess where you're like, I know that ingredient is this one. And the only requirement for that is that it has to be represented in the pantry. So if there you want to guess an egg and there's no egg out there, you can't do a no guess. And your no guesses if you're right by yourself, four points. If you share the correct guess with someone else, two points each. If you're wrong, the ingredient's not revealed. You're just told that you're wrong and you lose a point. So high risk, high reward. Um, it's really cool. So there are two different ways to get information and to kind of guess information. And then even yet, there is something called a tea break. And the tea break is a way for you to specifically ask one player at the table in your four ingredients, do you have a grape? You write, it's a secret, nobody else knows what you're doing, and you just secretly circle grapes and you're like, yes or no. <laughs> and you pass it to someone and they say, you know, check mark or X, and they pass it back to you and then you secretly write down all your information. So this game is all about trying to figure out where the ingredients are inside of a player's recipe card and getting as much information as possible as quickly as possible and then banking on those points. So instead of having like a, here's the final answer and I got to it first, there's a variety of ways to gain the points along the way. And again, you never actually have to guess what everyone's ingredients are and where, you just have to earn the most points on the board. And I think that's really cool. It's, it's an interesting way to come around, come about to a deduction game. And much like in deduction games, you want to, you know, like not tell people what you have. In this game, it actually benefits you to give as much information as you possibly can when you give your clue or your hint to your fellow players when it's your turn. And that's also really weird and interesting. And it's definitely unique. Um, I can't think of many deduction games that do it that way. Plus with the ingredient, which is the item or the weight, being able to give a variety of clues is pretty cool too. So it's interesting, it's, it's fast, it's about 40 to 90 minutes for a game, and the three to four player game works incredibly well. Right now they're working on their two player variants, so I'm excited to see how they are able to work that. Um, very, very interesting, fascinating game. I, I do think, though, that one of my, my biggest critiques, and, and this is just a, a luck of the draw, um, when you're reaching in the bag and you're looking for those ingredients, um, you really do need to make sure when you make a guess that it's represented in the pantry. And on your turn, you can draw and you can be saying, I really want those eggs, and you may not draw the eggs. And so you kind of go maybe a couple turns longer than you want to make a guess, just simply because of the luck of the draw. There is a feature in the game that allows you to flush the pantry as best you can by spending a tea break token that you've earned. Um, every player will have the chance to get one of these when they cross past the five mark on the point track, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to see that ingredient represented in the pantry. But I do see that this is essentially the function or the feature in the game that allows you to flush and to hopefully get those pantry ingredients that you're looking for. 
Um, again, fascinating, and as a deduction game goes, really the, the your worst enemy is yourself in taking notes about what you give to other players, but also about what you receive from uh, your fellow players to try to make the best uh, educated guess and or a no during the discussion phase as you can. Just a really fascinating uh, deduction game that has a nice, like, relevant and, um, like, interesting palatable, yes, uh, that is going to be a pun intended theme here because Secret Recipe is delicious and beautiful and uh, I really do like the artwork and clear, clear, clear iconography. Um, again, very thoughtful game. So that's going to be it for me. I will see you later, folks. Bye.